Welcome to the session. Um, Kimberly Lagaki currently works at Cal State University East Bay. She is the social media director um, for the school as a whole and she now teaches graduate students in the College of Business and Economics and in continuing education social media classes. She's the first professor instructor in the entire CSU system to be offering social media courses. So um, she's always, she likes to stay on the cutting edge of technology, so she's going to tell us how we can do that with LinkedIn. That's right. Thanks, Kate. And it, it, I hope everyone can hear me. A huge apology for taking so long. As I was mentioning to Kate, I guess this is what I have to look forward to when I start teaching online classes at RCSU. So let's just roll into it. I'm going to be a little bit faster than what I was expecting to happen. Hopefully everyone can see the About Me slide, and this is what I call the CRED slide. Like, why are you waiting for me to talk tonight? You know, what do I bring to the table? So after 20 years of working in corporate marketing where I was a hiring manager, I made the leap into higher education. And not only uh, was I the first uh, social media professional hired by the CSU, and that's all 23 campuses um, hired, I also teach. So, and I work with startups. So right now I, I work at uh, Cal State East Bay as the social media director. I also am teaching the MBA program and working with the startup. So hopefully I'll bring tonight a, a unique perspective, which is not only just academic or corporate, it's kind of a well-rounded approach. And you can see if you want to connect with me, you can uh, hook up with me on Twitter, Pinterest, and of course LinkedIn. So why LinkedIn? I know that this went out in um, the promotional material, but this is really powerful, the fact that 98% of recruiters use LinkedIn to find qualified candidates. Just this morning, I received a call from a headhunter who was looking to find a full-time social media professional at a VP level for an East Coast college. It's not posted anywhere. He found me on LinkedIn and called me this morning. And I thought, what great timing, because I knew I was doing this presentation tonight. And also, I have had students in the past who have created very uh, strong LinkedIn profiles, and they have been reached by uh, startups here in the Bay Area looking for young marketing talent. And again, these positions were never posted, uh, but because they had a, a great profile on LinkedIn, they were um, found in the searches. So how can you take that and apply it to yourself? This is Patrick Devine. He is one of our grads from Cal State East Bay. He came and spoke to one of our uh, job panels that we held in April of last, uh, of earlier this year. And he asked our audience of about 300 students to raise their hand if they had a LinkedIn profile. And believe it or not, only about a third of students had it. So he said, all right, put your hand down. Now those who don't, raise it. And he said, you will never get a call from Oracle. If you apply and you don't have a LinkedIn, what does that say about your knowledge of contemporary technology? So that was eye-opening and that created a real buzz on campus and we started to create a lot more LinkedIn workshops as a result of that. Uh, so hopefully you are um, going to raise your hand after we're done tonight. Another reason why you want a LinkedIn, when someone Googles you, and it's the exact same thing when I teach this workshop to faculty members, they always think, well, I'm not looking for a job, why do I care? Well, they're going to be uh, applying to speak at conferences. They're going to be submitting research. They want to be seen as experts in the field. Maybe the media want to interview them. You know, so LinkedIn, when you Google yourself, I have a lot of activity online, and the number one thing that comes up when I Google my name is LinkedIn. And that's fantastic because I have full control over what is said on LinkedIn. I control that. Now, from your own School of Library and Info Science, you have, they have some really good points as well. It demonstrates to employers that you're well-versed in current Internet and social media capabilities. So we just talked about that with Oracle. It also helps you to develop and showcase your personal brand. Absolutely, you control it, and it comes up prominently in Google searches. It connects you with opportunities. It builds your professional networking contacts. I'm sure you're doing that amongst yourself now as students. You can research industry, companies. Um, it's great because when you go to apply for a job or you find somebody who is working where you want to work, and if you haven't tried it already, you can just click the hyperlink for the company and everyone will come up on LinkedIn who works there. 
and then you can see if you have any contacts or know anyone who might know someone who works there. So it's just such a powerful tool. And the most important thing is it makes you visible to hiring managers, recruiters. This is the tool I use when I look for guest speakers in my classes. Uh, they, I've also been contacted because people found me on LinkedIn who asked me to come and speak to events. So it's really um, uh, you know, a powerful tool if you want to have a presence in your career. So step one is how you start to optimize your, pre uh, your online profile. If you don't do anything else tonight, please, please, please do at least these three things. So what you see here is your digital handshake. So when people search for you or they start to search for people that they might want to offer a job to or to hire as a speaker, this is what comes up. This kind of a summary. It's your business card. And up at the top, when I start teaching classes in social media strategy, I get the, the, my roster and I start to look for students on LinkedIn. I want to get an idea of what my incoming class, where they are with LinkedIn and what their knowledge is. And what you see at the top, this is the same person, top and bottom, that you see on the right. And unfortunately, what you see is what I find probably 85% of the time with my students. No picture. All they say about themselves is they're a student and that's it. And they always say, well, I don't really have anything I can add, and that's so not true. So take a look at the bottom. Who would you want to contact? It's the same person, the person at the top, or the person at the bottom. So the person at the top is just a student. Well, that might be you're just a student now, but you really are. You're an aspiring professional of something. Uh, so you can see at the bottom, this person is an aspiring social worker seeking opportunity, health care, elderly, family services. You can look at this and tell within 10 seconds exactly who this person is, friendly face, where they want to work, what their knowledge is. You get an idea of who it is. So we're, let's just talk about what makes a good profile photo, a keyword focused heading, and then how do you customize your URL. So if you just do those three things, then you are going to be so much further ahead than probably 60% of people on LinkedIn. So this is a game I like to play with a lot of my classes, which is, Let's play good profile pick or bad. So hopefully you have a profile pick in there. So take a look at the top left. And the gentleman is, he's kind of wearing a pinkish shirt, top left. And that's what we call our passport photo. You can tell it's against, it probably is a passport photo. He's dressed professionally. He's, you know, clean shaven. He looks very professional. White, you know, black, no background. But he's not smiling. So you want to make sure you smile. Take a look at all the others. They at least have some expression on their face. So you don't want to look like a robot. You don't want to look scared or you're void of personality. So take a look at the guy right next to him, the one with the mountain. He's kind of got a, a, a pullover on with some mountains in the background. So that's great. I mean, this would be a great profile uh, pick if he was working for maybe the Sierra Club or was an environmental lawyer or something with the environment, don't you think? But um, he is a law student and he is studying patent law. So when you look at that, does that say patent attorney to you? It doesn't to me. So there's a disconnect between what he's trying to achieve and uh, the brand image he's portraying. That doesn't say a corporate lawyer. Now look at the cookie next to him. What does that tell you? What do you see when you first look at it? Again, if she is studying to be a party planner or a bed planner or you know, maybe in hospitality, something along that, I would say, yeah, you probably could do that. You know, that could certainly showcase it. But she's actually a finance student, and she's looking to get into finance. And so, again, finance is probably one of the most conservative industries to get into, and if so if that's the first thing that comes up, Put your shoes in the HR person. You're probably going to say, no way. And then the last guy up at the top, I call him the, hey, come here, dude, where he is looking like he's ready for a party. So that doesn't say it's professional uh, to me. Uh, it looks like he's ready for the party to get started. So take a look at the bottom at each of those. You have... Uh, they're all, you know, they don't need to be professional uh, taken at all. The one at the bottom on the far right is very, very, um, it's, it's really a common one. It's probably taken with her iPhone. It's against an office wall. But it's still perfect. She's smiling. Her hair is nicely styled. She looks friendly. And, and if you look at each of them, they do have an expression on their face. 
smiling, close up, friendly. And none of those are professional photos. You don't need to have that. But that's kind of the image you're going for. And then on the bottom, if you want to show some personality, if you're a creative person, go for it. You can see on the bottom, on the far right, is a black and white photo. And that's totally uh, fine if you want to do that as well. In fact, mine is black and white uh, just because I thought it looked better with what I was wearing. And the woman who took my photo is actually the one on the bottom right. She's a graphic designer. She's an artist, an entrepreneur. And that's her image that she put out there. And I really like that. So it's okay to have personality. Just make sure it's the personality that's going to match up with what you're doing. If it's a very conservative industry you want to get into, you know, wearing a halter top is probably not the right thing to do. So some more tips that you want um, that you might want to take into consideration. We talked about dress to reflect your atmosphere. Choose a photo that conveys your energy and personality. So if you look at the ones on the right, these are all professional ones. And there's a great article there if you want to get really more into details. And every now and then, if you're based here in the Bay Area, I see deals for about $99 where a local photographer will take your picture and you can use it across all your social media profiles. And that's something that I encourage a lot of faculty members to do. And I think next time I see a deal, I'm going to buy one myself. Because you put your picture everywhere. You put it online. You might need to send it for presentations or to a conference or to submit it for other things. So if you find yourself having to send your picture uh, multiple places, it might be worth that $99 investment for someone to uh, you know, spend about an hour with you, go outside, meet somewhere locally, and they take your picture and you get a really good range. I have some friends that have done that and it worked well. So going back to the tips on the left, you want to make sure you're smiling. You don't want anyone in the background. You don't want it cluttered. Um, and this one, it sounds like an obvious duh, everyone would know, but no pets or kids unless it's job related. And that one surprised me. I had a student who had a picture with her and her baby in her LinkedIn profile. And that would be great if she was studying to do um, child development or education. You could probably get away with it. But not if you really want to get into a marketing career. It just wasn't appropriate. So we just talked about that's probably a better Facebook photo than is something that would match your resume. And then your worst mistake ever is, of course, no photo at all. So let's go into number three, which is the keyword focused heading. So look at each of these. You have Jeff, Andrea, and Amy. And Andrea is one I thought might align to uh, most of you on the call, information um, uh, professional at a uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. But if you look, this is what people see. On all of them, you can see that what appears at the bottom is your title. So you have a heading, you have your name, and then you right underneath that, you have an opportunity to use not only your title, but some additional keywords to kind of round out who you are. And then what appears also in searches at the bottom is your title again. So a lot of people um, make it redundant. They have their title in both spaces, and what you're doing is you're kind of missing out on some key real estate to stuff it full of keywords to help you get found in searches that HR professionals might be doing. So you can see what Jeff does. You get a sense of who he is. His title is Digital Marketing Consultant. But he also says, I'm a social media keynote speaker and author and small business. So you get a sense with him, you kind of get an idea he's in technology and he does so, and he does a lot for small businesses. Amy at the bottom, financial social media consultant, social media speaker, online marketing consultant from a financial services company. Then you look down at the bottom at her current position. She's a financial social media marketing consultant, online marketing. And she's an insurance advisor to financial social media. So with her, you walk away and go, this one does social media for finance companies. She gets that across very clearly what her focus is. And then Andrea, her title is, um, or she's with the National Institute of Standards and Technology, but she describes it, she used that space to say, I'm an information professional with experience in libraries, archives, and nonprofits. So she says what she is and then where her uh, experiences in libraries, archives, and nonprofits. So the, the point here is not to use, to be redundant. You can repeat your title, but then you have about 100 characters, and make sure you put some keywords in there. And you can see the current kind of best practice, everyone uses those little vertical 
uh, flash marks in between the keywords. And you'll see that I use that. That's kind of a contemporary thing that people are doing. So you're saying, okay, now what do I do? What are my keywords? Um, so again, if you want to increase your ability to be found, you want to establish your online brand, and you want to offer a mix of what you do, what you know, and where you work. And so right now as students, if you are currently employed full time doing uh, something else, and you really don't want your employer to know that you're in the process of looking to completely make a career change, you probably need to just lay low and kind of be in limbo a little bit. So this may not apply to you. That's kind of a very um, uh, you know, a soft line that you've got to be careful of. And only you can make that call. If you're actually actively engaged, you don't mind saying you're a current student and you're an aspiring information professional, then you might want to think what are some other keywords you can put in there. So if you want people to Google you, what do you want them to find? So with mine, it would be higher ed, um, I'm a adjunct professor, and uh, social media, maybe online branding. I forgot what my keywords are, but they're somewhere along that line. And those are the calls that I get and the emails that I get are related to those keywords that I focus on. So if you're currently employed, it's okay to use your title, but then come up with three to five keywords, whatever you can stuff in a hundred characters, that if someone's Googling or searching for you, or you know, I'm not Googling, but if they're looking for you on LinkedIn to offer you something, what would that be? What are some key areas? If you're a job seeker, please do not put I'm unemployed or I'm looking for a job. What you want to say is I'm a talented information professional seeking a new opportunity. So there was a study done I did not include, but it talked about what HR people who actually use LinkedIn how turned off they are if you say I'm unemployed. And um, it's much better to say I'm a talented professional seeking a new opportunity. Now if you're a student, you might recall from our previous slide, if you do, if, um, if you know, when it, if you focus on your uh, career right now as a student, you want to say I'm an aspiring social worker. I'm an aspiring social media professional. I'm an aspiring nurse and seeking an internship or career opportunity. It says so much more about you than I'm just a student at you know, San Jose State or Cal State East Bay or San Francisco State because you're only going to be a student a short time. What are you aspiring to do? And whatever those keywords are, it's just like when I talk to businesses and we want to get them found on Google, you want to use those keywords, whatever they are, information, technology, um, library, whatever they are, use those everywhere in your profile and I'll tell you where in just a few slides. So if you want to make your headline stand out over on the right, uh, Forbes had a really good article about it. And so the headline that actually ran said how to make your LinkedIn headline stand out, but when you actually cut and paste the URL, it says uh, does your LinkedIn headline suck? So it's kind of fun if <laughs> that's what they're using uh, to get Google searches. So the last thing you might want to consider is your custom URL. And this is uh, very easy to do. You can go right in to edit your profile and, um, and then use some keywords. So you want to use the same name as your resume. And it's okay here to add some keywords. This is really useful if you have a very common name. So trust me, there are no other Kimberly Legacies in the United States. I'm pretty sure of that. I Googled it. But if you have a common name, you might want to put uh, like Julie Smith, who is my cousin. You might want to say Julie Smith um, Library Services or Julie Smith um, Child Development. Whatever your area is, it'll help set you apart. And if your name is taken, you want to you know consider adding your middle initial as well. But I would use like Kimberly Lagaki Social Media. Just one more thing you can do to kind of set those keywords in. Just like pretend you are a business. So if I was setting up the business for you in a website, we would stuff your keywords all over the place, all over your website, and that's what we're doing on LinkedIn. Now on my resume, what I do is I take that uh, URL, and at the very bottom of my resume, I just say references, and I put there, um, please read a 30 plus recommendations on LinkedIn, and I provide the URL. And uh, so I use that, especially if I'm applying to speak somewhere, and uh, and trust me, I don't speak where I have to use a headset very often, so I usually am 
more on my game. But hopefully you can do that. So those are the three things that I just beg all of you, please, 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 just at the minimum do those. You know, focus on your head, your uh, photo, your headline, and your URL. Because that's what everybody is going to see if they search for you, look for you, and it's going to come up on Google. Now, if you want to go one step further, here's some things you can do. You want to make sure you take advantage of your summary. And that's right under your picture. And you have an opportunity to stuff that full of 2,000 characters. And you think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Some people who are very creative, who are journalists and communication professionals that I deal with, they tell these wonderful stories and they have no problem filling 2,000 characters. So if you do have a problem, and I'm one of them, I have not used all 2,000 characters, I just, I do it very briefly, and that's what you can, uh, I do a very brief version, and that's what you can see on the right. So if you're not someone who's going to write a lot, these are some examples that you can do, and what you see in both is they have specialties. What are you in? I'm practiced in digital marketing, social media, new media, blogging. See, those are all key words. So if someone's looking for someone who does social media and blogging in San Francisco, I have a much higher chance of coming up because it's all over my LinkedIn profile. So if you do want to take advantage of all 2,000 characters, break it up. Don't write one big block. You can say um, things like career highlights, uh, building teams, targeted goals, uh, management style, projects you've worked on. And it's a great place, too, to include your contact info. So if you, um, so maybe if somebody wants to contact you, this is where you can put like a Yahoo address or, you know, one of your Gmail accounts where you wouldn't mind showing to the public. So they can contact you quickly if they, even if they don't have or buy the upgraded profile from a LinkedIn. And here's an example. So if you're wondering what in the world do you do with 2,000 characters, here's an example. And this is from the stunningly good LinkedIn profile summaries link that I gave you. And this, uh, you can see, this is actually very creative. So she's focused on creative writing and is looking for really a marketing position. And this is wonderful. So this kind of shows how she likes to write. She's a very creative person. And then at the bottom, she gets her information, send an email to Kay, blah, blah, blah. And she put her specialties in. So you get a sense of who she is and her personality. And then she also stuffed it full of those keywords that we keep talking about. So either way is right. Uh, the main takeaway is make sure you use keywords. What do you want to know? What do you want to add in there? Oops. So here is another one. If you're actively in the job market, this is the best secret weapon. And I think almost 15 percent, only 15 percent of LinkedIn users actually do this. And this is the update. So here's my profile. And then right below that, if you, on your profile page, you see update. And it says share and update. Nobody does this. And so a lot of people create a LinkedIn profile and they're like, we're done. I'm done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'll let the phone begin to ring. Well, guess what? Uh, you know, how many people are in the Bay Area, if you are in the Bay Area looking for a job, if you don't keep it updated, you're not going to come up high on the list. The, you know, the LinkedIn doesn't want to connect prospects to, to the uh, headhunters who haven't updated an account in two years. So this is the best thing you can do, and it's actually something I make all my students do as part of a class, is they have to update at least once a week right below that. And so you're probably thinking, well, what am I going to put? You know, do I put what I had for lunch? You know, what in the world? Because it's so different than what you normally would do on a Facebook or even Twitter. So again, we're talking your keywords, and I'll show you an example in a minute what you can do in using your class assignments to do that. You want to relate to your keywords. So with mine, if you look through my profile, it's all social media related because that's what I want to be known as. That's what my focus is. Um, it's also a great opportunity at this point to link it to a Twitter account because if you see down below where it says activity in that red circle, it says share with the public and Twitter. And it's so easy to just do both at the same time. So even if you don't really want to manage a whole Twitter account, at least get the extra visibility because, again, it's going to be found on Google. So if you're going to post it, why not have it appear two places instead of one? It's still the same cost, same effort. 
So this is also if you want to promote your blogs, if you're writing blogs for classes, articles, anything you've either written in class. And if you're really in the job market, you want to do it like one to two times a week. And uh, make sure you also like other articles at least one to two times a week. So if you're following other classmates and they start doing this and they post an article you're interested in, you should like it because what happens is it then appears on your profile as well. And it also shows that you are engaged in interacting with others. So it's kind of like Twitter. You want to, to post your own original content, but then also uh, make sure that it shows that you are reaching out to others and uh, you know liking their content. And people like it. Not a lot of people like each other's content, so when someone does, they get a little note saying, Kendall Lagaki liked your article, and you're like, oh, wow, that's great. So it's really good. It's a good thing to do if you want to connect with someone or kind of earn brownie points with someone. Um, so right before midterms, I see all of my students starting to like everything I'm posting, and I'm like, aha, I know what's going on here. So it's really easy. Here's what you do, and this is what I teach my classes to do. Go to Google, and this is my example from very early on from Kim Wheeler, the social, uh, the social work student. And we just put in Google social work research. Now, this group on this phone call probably can search a lot more places than Google because of what you're studying. But this is just the basics. So go to Google, and then I tell everyone, as you can see at the top, don't just search web, search the news. And that's where you're going to find fresh content. And look and find something that appeals to you, what's interesting. And so in this case, what is financial social media? That's kind of, I don't know, I've never heard of it, have you? And so all you do is you go to the page, you get the URL, and you just go back on the right side. You just cut paste, put your URL in there, and LinkedIn is fabulous. It's so much better than Facebook. You put it in and it just automatically will create uh, uh, the post that you see. And what people don't tell you is that the headline and the content are completely editable, just like on Facebook. So you just double click the headline before you post, before you share it, double click the headline and also the body. And make sure it covers the who, what, when, where, why. Kind of tells someone who's just scanning everything you need to know about it. And that's it. You don't even and make sure you take the URL out of the top so you kind of clean it up. You can remove it. Once it, the post appears with the picture, you can take it out of the, the body of the post. And you can either say, hey, this is a really interesting article, or the nice thing on LinkedIn, you don't even have to do that. Just post it. So how easy is that? Find an interesting article, find the URL, go back to LinkedIn, paste it, make sure you remove it so it looks nice and clean, and then you just share it. That's easy. So what you want to do is start to develop a track record of if you are a, an information um, professional, then you want to prove it. So if someone's looking for you and you've got your keywords and they look at your profile because you came up, because you're so active that you came up higher in the search, and they see that you're posting constantly fresh news all about information uh, um, you know, technology, then they're going, you're going to make yourself believable. They're going to believe your brand. If you're committed to it and you consistently do it, you'll make sense, just like a business. So here are some other examples that people have posted. Uh, you know, send it to the unrepealing, the 1099, you know, et cetera, on life insurance. Well, look what the guy does. He's an insurance broker. He posts about insurance. It makes sense. So it's really good stuff you can post. This is actually from a sales article. But this is a great way to build confidence, to share information. And you can see over at Trevor on the left, yeah, you can also tag people. So I've done this where a reporter wrote an article I liked and I actually tagged and said, this is a great article by and tagged the person uh, because I was uh, uh, connected with them on LinkedIn. And that's just a great way to give them extra props and to connect with that person as well. So hopefully this has given you a couple of ideas. And we talked very briefly about Twitter. And I just like Professionally, they say you really need um, uh, LinkedIn and Twitter are the best business buddies, and especially in building a career, because you want to grow your networks on both. So I'm very active on Twitter with this uh, social media community all around the world. And what I find is that when I started interacting with people, they start going to my LinkedIn because that's what I put on my Twitter account. 
And so they start connecting with me on LinkedIn. So I'm growing my LinkedIn contacts. And then I'm also growing my Twitter because the things that I post on LinkedIn go out on Twitter, it gets found, and now people start to follow me on Twitter. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You grow your networks on both. It also increases your searchability. And the reason why I really like to do it and I push for students is if you don't have a lot of experience in that area, that doesn't matter. What you want to do is you show that you're an expert by providing interesting content. If you can show I know it and you build this uh, brand for you, uh, it makes you more believable. Uh, so Twitter users um, more often will um, peruse other, rather than post. So what most Twitter users do is they get on and for me I search social media, I like travel, I like the hashtag SF because I live in San Francisco, and I just look for things. And I find people that are interesting, people who post a lot about San Francisco that live in my area and Selma, I will follow because I like what they have to say. And that's exactly what I find people doing with me because they know if they follow me, it's going to be really focused around social media, San Francisco, maybe a little bit of travel, but it's really going to be on social media. So they know what they're going to get when they follow me. So if I talk about sewing and dogs and social media and then I send out some inappropriate jokes, and then I don't do anything for a while, and then I do something else. I don't have a brand. I'm just idly chatting. And so that's not going to help me. And chances are people may not, they'll probably unfollow you. And Twitter is the best place to find content for use on LinkedIn. So if you love Twitter, then you probably agree with me. That's where you find everything. I find my latest breaking news on social media, all the white papers, webinars, everything on Twitter. And then I find it on Twitter, I put it back on LinkedIn, it goes back out on Twitter. It's a whole cycle. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the power of LinkedIn. If you don't want to build a big profile, at least create an account with your name and link it and tie it to your LinkedIn. So even if you just put out one article a week, it's better than nothing. At least it's still helping you to build your brand. Um, the next one we talk about using your LinkedIn is your personal brand headquarters. And again, just like a business, most businesses you might have a Facebook account, a Twitter account, YouTube and all that, but everything they do, they drive you back to the website. But because we're not businesses, we need to drive them somewhere. So if you have a blog, you can drive them to your blog, you can drive them, you know, wherever you want to go. You have to think when you're putting your social media portfolio together, where do you want to drive people back to? You can't kind of be scattered all over. And one of the things, especially if you're in the job market, is to tie it back to LinkedIn. Uh, and this is where uh, you want to drive them to LinkedIn, just like I do on my Twitter and other places. And you want to make sure you include any articles that you might have written, even if it's for the paper or if you've been published anywhere. Research conducted. Uh, that is really important, and presentations. Over the summer, we had um, real-life clients that came in to work with my students in the media planning class, and some of my students worked with Aramark on the launch for Taco Bell on campus. And she, one of my students put that in her profile and was able to use it to get an actual entry-level job in marketing with Safeway because it was big brands and uh, you know, consumer goods. Uh, that they, um, you know, they felt confident that she understood what their what the restrictions were. You know, especially uh, in promoting um, you know, high-profile brands, she was aware of all the restrictions from doing the class project. So make sure you put things in there because that certainly caught the eye of the HR person she was working with. And you can also download a loaded app of books you've read. So again, everything that surrounds your keywords, whatever you want to be known as, you know, try and put everything out there. And I encourage my students, you know, put everything. You just don't know what might hit uh, a nerve with a um, hiring agent uh, or a hiring professional. And then if you really want to get into it, check out a tool called Hootsuite. It's used, I think, by 90%, including San Jose State, it's used by 90% of universities um, around the country. And what you can do is schedule and post articles. If you really want to get into Twitter, you can you know, really get into it that way, and that's a great scheduling tool. And uh, if you go to Hootsuite, you can actually post to Facebook, uh, your WordPress, 
a few other places, about seven platforms. So if you put in one article, you just hit post and it will go to all seven of your accounts at the same time. And then you can schedule it for like Christmas and New Year's, like a year out. So check that out. It's free. As long as you don't want reporting, uh, it's a free tool to use. The other thing I highly encourage, this is the Cal State East Bay alumni page. It's much smaller than San Jose State. We're not as old or as big. But I always encourage people to connect with alumni. And I haven't seen a study uh, yet on, I can't tell you anecdotally uh, that the number of, uh, when alumni join the alumni page, and um, they are much more open to helping students. So sometimes I see students will reach out to alumni that are not part of the alumni uh, group on LinkedIn, and they don't, they kind of have a mixed um, results. Uh, but the other, uh, but when they actually join, what they do is they say they've already reconnected, and they're more likely to help current students. So I hope that makes sense. And I'm sorry, I hope you don't hear the crickling in the background. My toy poodle is going crazy at the moment with the toy. So sorry about that. So always try to connect with alumni, especially those that are already on the LinkedIn group. You will probably have a much better result with them than those that have not connected back to the university. And tips, I did not see this. I looked through the San Jose um, career pages. Uh, so I just included the link to our own university, so I hope you don't mind. Um, but when you do want to reach out to them, they are great if you want to reach out. I've had great luck uh, where students might reach, um, they'll ask, uh, you know, I'm interested in getting into the entertainment field. What advice do you have for me? What other thoughts do you have? Don't hit people up for a job. And that's something that I cringe when I hear about. Get to know the person, email very specific questions, request a phone interview, and then we have these great informational guides that you can download from uh, our website at Cal State East Bay. And then whatever you do, please follow up with an immediate thank you. And that's, again, another project I have a lot of students work on, and they have terrific results. One of my students just said, you know, I really want to work for Disney, and believe it or not, the chief information officer at Disney is one of our grads. And she just reached out to him on LinkedIn, and he responded. So when he was up in the Bay Area, he's down in L.A., but when he came up, he took her to lunch. And it was all because she reached out to him on LinkedIn. So, um, and he said nobody has ever done that So from the university. So he had an immediate connection. He, you know, wanted to help her. So don't be shy. Go and ask for help. Um, again, he was an alum that had uh, reconnected through the LinkedIn group. Uh, lastly, we always want to ask and give recommendations. And this carries a lot of weight with recruiters because if you look, you can do those little things now where that you can endorse people and you know you look at anyone's profile and, and it'll say, hey, will you endorse Kim Lagaki for these six things? And you're like, I don't know. And I don't even know what she does, but they but up who visits your page to do these endorsements. And they don't carry a lot of weight. The best thing with the endorsements, those are the things that you see at the bottom and they'll show all the little people who have liked certain um, keywords or certain skills that you have put in there. It kind of gives you an idea. What I like is it will show what they currently think of you. So it's almost like a focus group. What is the current perception of me? So if you, you might want to be known for, I don't know, an accounting background, but everyone is saying, no, you're human resources, you kind of need to think about what you can do to start to establish yourself as an expert in the area that you want. So recommendations are really important. These are not the endorsements. These are the ones where people will actually write something about you and you publish it. So I've done this for a lot of years, and I only have, I think, 30 or 31. and. Uh, you know, people always promise it took one of my old bosses two and a half years to finally write one for me. So they do carry a lot of credit because there is a level of involvement and engagement required. So uh, that's why they give credit to it. Not a lot of people have these. So this is great to connect with past professors, internship coordinators, colleagues, you know, so on and so forth who are already on LinkedIn. One of my students created her profile on LinkedIn for the first time in the summer. She reconnected with two past bosses that she had as internships. And one of them immediately within two days said, hey, thanks so much for connecting with me. I was wondering what happened to you. I actually have a job open. And she was 
able to get a job, another internship, without even asking just because she had reconnected. And so she was a good employee, and now the person knew where she was and had the contact and so that he didn't have before. And this just tells you how you can use the requester um, recommendation. And if you are going to ask a faculty member, you know, please don't send just a generic text. I really, uh, I tell all my students, please don't send it to me and just send me the generic text. You really have to put in there what exactly you want me to talk about. So instead of just saying, as you can see on the right, that's kind of what pops up automatically, you should put something, um, I would appreciate if you could discuss my ability to interact with clients of all ages, which is something I did for your class project at the Hayward Senior Center. So when I get that, I can say, oh, yeah, that's right. She did do that work there. Okay. Now I can start to write. You know, when I have 50, 60 students in a class, I don't remember who worked on what project. And whatever you do, if you ask a professor or a faculty member or a boss for a recommendation, please give them one in return. And so a lot of times people think, what am I going to say about a professor or a boss? Um, well, think about it. You know, our job is to educate students. Your boss's job is, is to lead a team. So to have that 360 perspective is absolutely critical. And you can see this is actually a review that I found online. I don't know who Michael B. is, but I loved it. And he was just a resident advisor. So look at that nice quote. And just imagine what that means to someone looking at Michael B's profile and thinking about hiring him. Uh, so you know your 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 input is so valuable as well. So it goes both ways. If someone asks me, I ask them in return. I'll write one for you, but I'd like you to write one for me back. And this is just my bonus step eleven, which is to start a LinkedIn group. And you can see over the right, there's a group called the Higher Ed Social Media Group. I started this myself on August 14th of 2009 because I didn't know anybody else working in social media in higher education. I had some people doing it here and there all across the CSU, um, but nationally it really was not a dedicated job yet. It was still such um, a, a, in the startup phase. And now as you can see, I just pulled this, I have 5,200 members in a group that I started myself. And I just said, I want a group, and I only want people who have a .edu address or whatever it is internationally. And that's it. I don't want spammers in. I don't want uh, salespeople in. I don't care if you sell to um, higher ed. You have to work at a university at any level. So I would let you guys join my group, but I would not let you know someone who from Blackboard join. Those Blackboard people are already trained to infiltrate my group, and I don't let it. So it's a really safe haven for people to talk about a spam and things and challenges they get from students and, and other things. So think about that. If you really want to be known as an expert and focused, maybe you want to start a group and to meet other people, like Bay Area Digital Librarians. Um, I made that up. I don't think that exists. All you do is create a description with your target audience, and you have to decide what you want to do. Do you want to make it an open group, which gives it maximum visibility on search engines, or do you want to keep it really closed? So if there were 5,000 members, I don't need to be found at this point, so I keep it closed and very hard to get involved. And the amount of spam is a lot. But make sure you position yourself as the group leader. And by doing that, I've been able to uh, been invited to join conferences, to speak at events, just because I'm engaged. And I started this group, that's all. I mean, I don't know anything more than anybody else in the group, but I was just the one that started the group. And it's just grown on its own because I do keep it very tightly controlled with no spam. So it's a nice community. And you're all invited to join. And uh, hopefully everyone is still with us. And if you have any questions, I don't know if I can hear you or not, but if you do, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, if I don't get to it tonight, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to know more about social media. I'm also on Pinterest, uh, LinkedIn, please link in to me, and my email and work number. So if you ever have questions or thoughts, I'm always happy to answer them. I do and, have, um, can you hear me, Kim? Yeah, I can. Hello. This is just absolutely fantastic. And I did, I know some people are starting to leave, and so I wanted to jump in and ask this question that had been asked earlier. If you know what the salient differences are between a paid and unpaid LinkedIn account? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
the big difference if you want with the paid, if you're looking to hire people, you obviously need a paid account. So we actually have paid accounts at work for our fundraising team. And that gives you the ability to search for more than 100 people. Um, you don't have to be connected with them to see all their information. Um, and that's what we use for fundraising purposes. If you don't, like my personal account, I don't pay for it. Um, there's really no, if you just want to network with people, join groups, post updates, connect with uh, people you already know, there's no reason to do it unless you really need to reach out to people for business purposes like HR people need to pay for it, fundraising people, you know, anyone that's sales people, they really should have a paid account. It just allows you to, to search for more people. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Tom, go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try the microphone. I hope you can hear me. Somebody should write. We can hear oh, yeah, you. your microphone's much better than mine. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, I was going to say there's, there's lots of places uh, to see resumes, what they should look like, and a model for a resume. I was wondering if there was anything like that for LinkedIn. And the second thing I was going to ask is um, a lot of people I know that use LinkedIn a lot, I feel like their, their profiles are really long. If somebody gave me a resume that was five pages, I think I'd find it irritating. And I always think a lot of good LinkedIn resumes are really long. Right. So what they're doing is they're maximizing their presence. They're using their LinkedIn as kind of like a website, a business would use a website. They're putting everything in there. And that's exactly what you want to do because you don't know how people are going to search for you. So what they're looking for, and that's why I think it's okay to have a very big presence on LinkedIn, is no one's printing it out. What you want to do is to have as many different things in there to just reinforce what you know and what you're studying and what you're an expert in. Now, no one should ever apply for a job with a five-page resume. That's a completely different thing. But again, it's the same thing that applies. When you put your resume together, everything gets scanned nowadays. Everything at SC Johnson, when I worked there, it would all come scanned in. And I didn't look at anything that didn't have at least 75% matching keywords to the job description that I had posted. So it's kind of the keywords are a commonality, but I think the Obviously, it's going to be a more edited version for a resume, but LinkedIn, you should put as much out there as you want. And you feel comfortable doing. And Kim, are there any um, good places to look for um, really good LinkedIn profiles to kind of model our own after? Or is it just a matter uh, yeah, of finding look at people we respect in the field and then seeing what their LinkedIn looks like? No, look at some of the people I used as examples. So like Trevor Trimble, and here's this um, Doll Watson, and then I had some earlier ones. Take a look at theirs, because a lot of times they've spoken at conferences on LinkedIn, or I found them another way. So here's some other people, and that's why I included Andrea. I think she was the most, com you know, the, the most similar to what everyone is studying here. So look at, take a look at their profiles as well, because they've done a really good job. And folks, I just wanted to remind you that we are recording this, so we will be posting it and um, distributing it through uh, our website and social media, Facebook, Twitter, that sort of thing. Um, so if you want me to send it to you specifically, feel free to leave your email address in the chat log. Any other questions? Um, I see here on the side that someone named Jill asked a question about where to put presentations and attending workshops. Yes. Uh, there's a huge debate going now with LinkedIn because I just actually had a paper accepted and was presented in Chicago in October on social media. And there is nothing now in the LinkedIn where you can do that. So the academic community is really lobbying LinkedIn to add this in. So right hmm. now you've got it added in under articles. That's the only place you can put it. Um, I, so I put my research that I did under the articles um, section on your LinkedIn. But hopefully LinkedIn will listen to us and add in, um, you know, an academic uh, slant that, that would benefit us in academia. 
All right, now you have to put it under articles or projects. That's it. That's your choice. Ah. Uh, we have some people typing in questions. Can you read that, Kim? Or I guess I should read it to you. Would it be appropriate? Yeah, go host, ahead. Would it be appropriate to host those on your personal professional website and link to it from your profile? Say if you have research or a paper you or published material. I'm not sure I understand that. Um, would it be more appropriate rather than link putting them directly on LinkedIn? to put a link to say your, you know, wherever you're housing that information where people can access it rather than have it directly oh. on LinkedIn. Oh, absolutely. So we talked like about the brand headquarters. The link. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, and then you, and there you might want to put that in your summary section as well. Uh, so in this case, you would LinkedIn. You would use LinkedIn to drive people to your personal website. So that would be absolutely appropriate to put uh, links and to drive people to your website, visit for more information or see more articles here and provide a link. So it all goes back to where do you want to house all your information. For a lot of us, if you have your own personal website, that's awesome. You're way ahead of me. Uh, for the rest of us, we don't, so LinkedIn is probably the best repository. But if you do have your own website, absolutely make that the center of truth, if you will, and then have everything from your presence from Twitter to LinkedIn to Instagram, whatever, all point back to your web. Okay, and a question from Steph. Um, she says this might be a silly question, which I, I'm already going to disagree with. But is it considered totally acceptable to send contacts to professors, et cetera? I always worry that I'll be bothering them, if that makes sense. No. If you have faculty members that are on LinkedIn that are very active on LinkedIn, they get the value of it. They're probably ones that are presenting at conferences and they see you might be a student today, but guess what? You're going to be a peer tomorrow and uh, you're going to be someone they want to keep in touch with, so send it to them. If they don't connect with you, it's probably on their end. They just don't get LinkedIn. They're not comfortable with it, and that's probably why they're not responding. Uh, so I encourage all my students, and I encourage faculty members to connect with students, uh, because if you're studying the same area, you're going to be peers, and it's great to have those connections. So the faculty members that get it will love to hear from you. And just keep in mind, you know, you're, we're crazy busy all the time with grad school. They're crazy busy all the time with um, academia. And just remember that and be strategic like Kim suggested, you know, um, ask them directly, you know, what, you're, what support you're hoping to get so that you make it easy for them to respond. That helps a lot in ensuring a response from busy people. <laughs> And let them know if it's been a long time since you've taken a class. It's so helpful. I look at someone's picture and go, they look familiar. And, it, and I don't remember, were they a student? So I left it when they said, hey, I took your class two years ago, and now I'm working here. I'd love to connect. And uh, that makes me so happy and so proud that they are reconnecting with me. Good point. Anyone else? The diehards. <laughs> Looks like we have our farewell chats coming in. <laughs> all right, oh, so I guess sorry. that's all the questions. Well, I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you all for your again. patience. Yes. Thank you. Me too. Thank you for your and patience. And LinkedIn. I'll see you on LinkedIn, you guys. Absolutely. All right. Thank care. you, Kim. Good night, Thanks everybody. For your Bye, Kate. Oh, you won. Bye. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. I'll stay on it for a couple minutes if anyone has any questions. Thank you all so much for sticking around. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, um, 
I'm not sure, Susie, if you know who's going to grab the, do we just, I, hmm, I think I have, I'm not sure how to grab the recording. Actually, 